Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Boric, and I did a season recap of the Atlanta Gladiators thus far. One of the other A teams, obviously, to start with the A to go in alphabetical order as they unfortunately lost in the postseason for their fan base. I'll be doing the Allen Americans next. But in this one, we're going to focus on a team that is in my Reading Royals division, the team I cover and have the privilege of jumping on the broadcast as color commentator since the fantastic legendary Pat Richards retired. And um, wish him all the best in retirement and wish all his St. Louis Blues the best in the Stanley Cup playoffs. But let's get right into it. The Anirondack Thunder were not close in this year. It was an offseason for them finishing 27-40-4 and four with 58 points. Both they and the Wooster Railroads were the only teams in the division to have a bad last 10. It cost the Railroads a playoff spot. The Thunder did not have a chance of being in the postseason. But the Thunder this year did still have a couple guys that just like every team, you have guys that shine bright like a diamond in the sky. Uh, no, obviously I'm joking. But you got guys that shine bright. According to the great ECHL site, their penalty kill was 74%. Not great, but not bad either. Power play 20%. That's obviously not bad. Um, but Shane Harper is a player that played very good. A player that I really liked following because he's from the Jersey area. A local area product is Jordan Kaplan, who still has only played 65 games because this was his rookie season. So, obviously, he has a lot of room to grow still, but had a good rookie season for the Anirondack Thunder. So, I feel like that kind of fits their team. Their team is a team that's not that wasn't there yet, but they're continuing to go. Grosso did good. Vidmar did good. Ir Irvine did good. Kaplan did good in his rookie season. Um, MacArthur didn't have a fantastic season. Kaplan also has to get better defensively, but offensively, he was very good. Uh, once he gets better defensively, I think you'll have that. Um, so I think they have guys moving in the right direction. Nick Rivera is also a good player as well. That fills out his role nicely. The former Wheeling Nailer uh, filled out his role nicely with Adirondack. They, th their offense, honestly, they did have depth offense of guys that scored over 20 points. Their issue that the Adirondack Thunder have to solve is similar to how I kind of talked about the Atlanta Gladiators, where they have a pretty solid offense, but the Gladiators obviously are a great playoff-style team because they have the forward defense to go to, to balance out the fact that they don't have the best defensive defense and have more push-it push, push it defensemen. But um, when it comes to the Anirondack Thunder, they obviously don't have that yet because they're still this team that's building their way up. I don't call anybody in the East HL because it's a development league rebuilding, but they're building their way up to being back into a success story and a potential Kelly Cup playoff team where, like, Blake Thompson is more valuable in the offensive end and defensive end. Uh, Ivan Shukarov did not have the best overall season. Uh, Chris uh, Lindsman uh, was solid but uh, wasn't fantastic. So it was kind of just down seasons where Jimmy Mazza was good in the defensive zone. So they got him going for them, and he played all their games. So uh, I think... They have building blocks with Kaplan, with like guys like Mazza. I think Masunas on defense is definitely a guy that's a good building block as well. Harper, Grasso, Vidmore. It's just about seeing and adding some of the other big guys in the league to be able to go around them. They obviously also brought in a, goal, a couple young goaltenders that didn't get to play this year. You'll see what they get to do next season. And their goaltending also. Sekaropoulos had his moments, but overall a down year for him Cassell also had his moments. Middens also had his moments. But that was kind of the telltales of their goaltenders. They all had their moments similar to kind of the Glads where uh, they have to figure out who's their guy going forward. Is it Sekharov? Is it Cassell? Is it Middens? Is it one of the young guys they brought in like O'Brien had a very good game? But um, what are they going to do going forward in net? What are they going to do going forward with their defense? And their forward core is not sure it's how fully put together, but I would say Vidmore, Irvine, Kaplan, Grasso, and Harper, you probably want to keep those guys around, and then MacArthur fills out his role nicely, same with Rivera, so you might want to keep those guys around, and then Stevens came in and supplied some good offense as well in his rookie season, so they had the good team building in the right direction, it's just about now adding some more guys that have been there, done that players in the league, like the Rivera's, uh, like the MacArthur's of the world.
that have had experience before. Well, not MacArthur, actually. MacArthur's only in his second season. But like the Rivera's that have had experience before this season um, as well. Because their team's a lot of rookies. Grasso, also a very good rookie. So I think they're going to continue to get better. Vidmore obviously has experience playing formerly with the Norfolk Admirals. He's over 100 games. So I think you have to keep someone like him around as well because you have to keep guys that are on those veteran, like at veteran status at that point. I would consider once you get over 100 games in the ECHL, you kind of earned your rights at that point of being kind of the first tier veteran where you're not fully a veteran yet, but you're still building your way up. But like they have a bunch of young guys. You got to keep guys like that around. You got to keep guys like Rivera that really fill out the roles around the guys that are around the 100 games in the league. I think that's big for this team as they build their way ups with the Harpers, Kaplans um, of the world, the Stevens of the world. Uh, I think they have to do that. They also obviously, as I said in conclusion, need to figure out who between Minns, Cassell, Sekaropoulos, or somebody else is the Manning cage going forward because that's going to be big as they had a bunch of roller coaster seasons from all of them that were able to pick it up at moments, but nobody was able to get consistent enough to be their man. Masunas I would keep on defense for sure. I would also keep Mazza because he's a simple, good, physical, defensive defenseman that can uh, really take on anyone and defend his team. So I would say he's a guy to keep. A uh, Corley played solid coming in. Um, so is, so did Theo Cardis. Um, so you have some young guys there as well to see what they can do next year. But it's going to be interesting to see what the Thunder can do going in the next season. Overall, this season down here for them. But they got some good building blocks moving into the next season. So this has been a season recap for the Anirondack Thunder, the ECHL Thunder. The fans, hopefully for the fans, they build up next year and have a better season. They were a good scrappy team this year, though. Got to see them a lot while covering the Royals. And they definitely were a competitive bunch, albeit a bad last place team. They were a competitive last place team. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below. Above the easy to to keep channel going to 250 or more to meet our goal by the beginning of June. Stay safe out there, everybody, and enjoy the hockey.